What's up guys? Yeah, today's a new day. Uh, we're gonna be fixing the car, continue fixing it. We're gonna finish putting the blow-off valve on the charge pipe, the new charge pipe we got, and then uh, test it out from that. I'll show you guys the before and after. See which one you wanna go with yourself. Also, we're gonna run this electronic boost controller, the G-Force. I keep having problems with it where it doesn't hold on to my target boost or like the setting that I'm choosing. Like pretty much you set your wastegate duty, you'll target a certain boost, like you'll go for a full, full watt pull, you'll hit 18 psi let's say and then you'll hold it so that way you're constantly targeting 18. Uh, but mine just keeps deleting that option for some reason, I'm thinking there's like some short somewhere. So instead of running it through the fuse tap, I'm just going to run it directly through. And I might even switch the location of this one to maybe the left. We're going to see right now. Right now everything's ran to the right. I'm going to have to run it directly down for the power source. And hopefully there's a ground down here as well. Alright cool. So I have this hanging. Also took this dash out. Uh, you can pull everything out if you wanted to disconnect it. I uh, just need to find the power source here and then I'll tap into it and we're good. Alright, so preferably the one I'm going to tap into is going to be the stickiest one right here. It's black and red. It's also running directly to the cigarette lighter. This line just, this is the second time it gets crimped and it's really like in a bad place right here. So we're going to fix that as well today. Alright, so never mind the sand you see because I was at the beach last time I drove this car. But I had to remove the bottom. I ran the boost line up through here. Oh, uh, it looks like it has a lot. It's a lot more free uh, and you can see it doesn't bend, it goes straight up. So I'm going to connect it here to this thing and it should be good to go. This right here is where I wired my positive. Here's a cable. I'm going to solder this right here in a second. So that's going to be my 12 volt source. I'm going to solder this as well. And that's running. That ground is running into here. Uh, I had to use red cable because that was the only cable I had. But obviously I wired it so I know that it's not a positive cable. But yeah, other than that, it's just putting everything back together. I had to remove this whole bottom panel. I had to remove the middle dash, the bottom dash. The location I chose for the G-Force ended up being on this side. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Actually, I'm a lot happier than I was on this end. I need to clean this up and then we'll get to the next part. All right, so I'm getting ready to switch out the charge pipe for the new one and slap on the teal blow valve. We're going to get that ready as well. But uh, I want to show you the difference or the similarities more so between the charge pipes. As you can see, there's not very many differences between the charge pipes. This is the Forge one and this is the XS Power. Forge is more well known. I'm not too sure about this company. I ended up just buying this one because it was cheaper because I needed the tile flange, you know. You can see how this one's a little bit thicker than this one. This one's pretty thin. So I'm kind of glad to see that the charge pipes aren't too different being that this one's cheaper. Also kind of unhappy because you do spend a little bit more money on a brand charge pipe that you probably don't need. But fitment, we still have to try it out and see if it actually uh, goes on. So we'll, we'll see what happens right now. All right, so I ran into another problem. The bolts that go into the sensor right here are not the same as before so i'm gonna have to find different ones just something to watch out for if you're doing this or planning to do this i ended up finding the bolts that'll go into the center right there it's gonna be these m407 by 12 millimeter and they look like this i use them for my teal wastegates as well and i just found these little washers uh you can probably pick them up if you're at the store grabbing these anyways and that should cover it because you do need the washers all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take off these bolts right here, just to open it up, see what the diaphragm is looking like, make sure the spring and everything moves and it's the right spring and whatnot. And yeah, we're gonna use one of these. You wanna be careful because the spring will pop up. Uh, you don't wanna mess up any of the threads too on your brand new blow off valve, because that would really suck. So as you can see, the spring one was kind of stuck on there. It looks like a little bit of glue. Uh, I'm gonna try to put it back the same way when I do put it back. Uh, but just something to keep in mind. So looks like the first time you kind of got to push it yourself. But after that, uh, it's got a lot, a lot for your movement. Diaphragm all brand new. Make sure there's no rips. Also, when you're putting it back together, make sure you don't uh, pinch any of this. Because then you're really, really in trouble. Awesome. After you make sure these are all tight, ready to go. You're going to want to get your port that goes on the top. But notice that there's only a hole on one side. So what you're going to want to do is mark it where the holes are so that you know it's going to go in the right direction. You want it to flow this way. 
Yeah, so the the mark, the black, the uh, mark, the black should be facing exactly where the port is going, and that means that it can flow at its best. Do not forget to add a little bit of plumber's tape because it will leak. So just uh, add a little bit and not too much because that'll make it leak too. Our blow valve is pretty much ready to be sat on top of our brand new charge pipe. Uh, you're going to want to put your O-ring. <laughs> valve is on the charge pipe it's got its sensor it's pretty much ready to go just don't forget the o-ring that goes in here and yeah we're ready to clamp it back up test it out see how it uh feels see if, if there's any surging or anything weird all right guys i am sweating balls i don't know if you can see but it's the middle of california summer yeah it feels insane right now just to be like out here in the sun i'm drenched we pretty much got everything set up though everything's back to normal in here you can see it looks a little bit cleaner I moved it over to this side. The car seems a little bit quieter with the new blow valve. The engine seems to be running a little bit better. If that makes any sense, like more deep, more like it should be. Uh, not so much like leaking, like um, But one thing I did get was a misfire in cylinder four. I'm not sure if it's from, uh, from everything that I moved around today or whatnot. So I'm gonna go back and check on it. And yeah, as far as installation goes, this is pretty much done. I'll end up showing you guys a before and after for the sound. Um, once we get everything touched up and everything. I'll also show you some test pull, show you if the car is running right or not. But yeah, this video is pretty much done. Update, the 335i has been running great. Um, after I fixed the wiring on the boost controller and also the manifold and tapped in and everything, the car actually started running really good. Um, it's hitting target boost, everything is fine. Um, it has a little bit of compressor surge if you're like in low boost but i don't mind so much because my turbo has a protector and yeah i mean it runs fine other than that it runs perfect the the throttle response is a lot better than it was with my forge throttle response is good um in between the shifts it's super crisp and quick uh, to release the pressure as well I, i'm really happy with it no complaints